Jeff. Hey, Ryan. How are you, man? Good. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic, man. I love your little setup. It's like oh, you've thanks, done this man. before. I, <laughs> I have, uh, you know, hosted my own podcast for quite some time and a lot of, lot of uh, podcast interviewing, some TV spots. So uh, when COVID hit, I told my wife, here's the budget. She's like, I got to design something that's a little bit more powerful as a background. So I appreciate that's it. That's awesome. Is your wife available to help out my background? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, send her some pictures and she would uh, she would definitely probably uh, probably like the uh, you know the designing factor. So yeah. Awesome. I'm too paralysis by analysis when it comes to my stuff. I can't uh, just can't find what I want and just pull the trigger and do it. But yeah, I need a whole new setup one of these days. People will see my uh, video, my podcast video, and be like, "Oh, he finally did it!" There you go. <laughs> but, there uh, you go. We're getting there. Yeah, you said podcast host. You are many things. I just noticed you have over what three hundred episodes for your podcast. Yeah, That's so no joke. It's. Uh, I'm actually finishing up my third iteration. So I actually had my podcast. Gosh, I want to say like it'll be four. I want to say four years. Is it four years? Maybe three years. Three years in November. And I started, I did 365 straight days of episodes, solo Holy episodes. Holy crap. That's amazing. And yeah. And then I, 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 it was morning fire and that was morning fire for entrepreneurs where I did a couple solo a week, but then one interview. And then this past year it was your hidden edge where it was interviews on Wednesday. Um, That's so, amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been, a, I, I love, I love the genre, right? I love the, quite honestly, Ryan, it gave me the ability to practice speaking. And I yeah. was, I was terrible at speaking. I, I, I was just not confident and my first episodes, they sucked, but you know, Same 365 enough. straight days of practice, you'll learn your, to find your voice and, and articulate and pitch and tone and all these things. So it's been a, uh, it's been a pretty cool ride. So I appreciate that. I can second that. I agree with everything you just said. However, never did 365 in 365. <laughs> I shoot for one to two, maybe three a week. But <laughs> listen, that was uh that was a bold uh task and ask. And once I committed, I'm like, all right, I'm just I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna follow through with this. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, you committed. That's yep. I love it. And uh for people listening, Jeff, you are a mental toughness and peak performance coach. That is freaking awesome because we all can use one of them. You're also the founder of Morning Fire and Warrior Dad. Like you said, you're a podcast host and you're an author. I can see why already. This has been just a couple of minutes of a conversation. My good friend and podcast host, Brian Andreco, recommended you that, uh, yeah, you should be on my show. And I said, uh, absolutely. This is a perfect, perfect fit for my show. I'm really, really excited to talk to you. And I also want to ask you, not really yet, but I want to get to it. The Goggins, you did the Goggins four by 48 challenge. I've done it twice. And twice I threw down a little over two and a half weeks ago, my own challenge. And we can talk about that. Yes. It is more savage than those Goggins runs. So it was, it was crazy. Oh my God. Yeah. I want to get into that. Yeah. Goggins is, uh, whether I like it or not, he's somewhat of an influence on me. I mentioned him many times on this podcast. I don't go as crazy or as dark as he does, but uh, it's good. I think sometimes you need that extra push or you want to go that extra mile. Sometimes you kind of think about some of his words, you know, if he can do it, uh, I can do it. So yep. I know a mantra you live by is rise, fight, love, repeat. Let's just dig into this. Uh, where did that come from? I created that kind of out of just thinking about what way can I motivate and inspire myself? And it's kind of been crafted over the last six years. And I, I have a lot of different mantras because we need things like you're saying, you need that extra push. I was running a trail run on, on uh, Saturday this past weekend and going up a hill and there were some bikers in front of me. And I said to my buddy who I was running with, I said, let's chase these suckers down. And all of a sudden in my head, it popped in. What would Goggins do? And I was like, WWGD. <laughs> I was like, he would chase them. You know, so I went. So I rise, it. fight, love, repeat. Also the name of my book. You know, it's a four-step process. We're rising in the morning. And I always love the symbolism of a phoenix rising from the ashes, right? We're reborn. Fresh day, new opportunities, blank canvas to paint whatever picture you want to in life. So that's the rise part. Fight, 
We need to bring that warrior fight mentality to everything we want in life. And I see it everywhere. I was talking to some fellow dads last night, like just go to Target or Giant and you can look and just take a moment and stop and watch everybody. Hmm. The majority of people are walking zombies, hmm. either on their phone, just head down, no energy. And, and they've given up. They've just been sedated by mediocrity and good and average. And, and if you truly want to live an extraordinary life, you got to fight for what you want. You got to bring that dog, that fight mentality. So I love that fighting for, for truly what you want. Love, hero secret weapon, right? You got to love yourself first. Then you can love all those around you. And that's so, so important. And then the secret sauce that nobody really likes to talk about and few people do is the repeat, just that consistency. I love to say consistency is the ultimate force multiplier, right? Mm -hmm. Like you bring energy, you bring focus, you bring time to something inside the parentheses. Consistency is that multiplier outside of them. If you're just consistent day in and day out, you will eventually get there. The issue is we don't know when we'll get there. So, so many people stop before there. So rise, fight, love, repeat. Great, great mantra that I've, uh, I've lived by. That's awesome. Consistency is like the key to basically everything. Honestly, it really is. Whether you show up for yourself or you just know someone that consistently shows up, it's impressive. And after you keep showing up for yourself, that really is how you build confidence. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, you're shaking your head. Yeah. That's something I've learned is like when you show up and you don't want to, and you just kind of look back at like, Hey, the last week, I didn't really feel like doing this workout, but I did it seven days in a row. If I can do that, I can do this and I can do anything. That's just such a powerful, powerful tool. So I love how you have that. Cause I think the repeat, like you said, I, to me, it almost, I would imagine it almost kind of gets lost when people see the rise fight and love, they know what that means. Oh, repeats just a random step, but no, it's not. That actually might be the hardest one, right? <laughs> yes, it, it is. And, and to be consistent on those days, like you said, where you don't feel like it, or I love to, to say like my rainy day mentality where, Hey, I want to go for a run. It's raining out 99.9% mm -hmm. .9 of people aren't going to go for a run. Mm. I love to change that lens and frame it up like that's a, a way to get ahead. Like that's the, those are the days when you don't feel like it, the conditions aren't right. Maybe you didn't get a good night's sleep. You didn't eat well the next day, something happened in your world and your mind's fighting you. Those push through days and those days that you can stay consistent. Those are the days that truly, truly matter. I got a question for you as a coach. Um, mm -hmm. There are a lot of days that people don't feel like it. Um, what are perhaps the signs or symptoms that they need to push through this instead of saying, you know, I really am sick or I really am tired. I don't feel like doing this. Like, what are those kind of like symptoms? You're kind of like, no, stop BSing me. You need to get up. You need to go do this. So, I mean, one of the things I talk about is never miss twice, right? You can miss one day. But man, two days becomes a week, becomes a month, and you just fall completely off the wagon. Mm -hmm. And we have, we expend so much energy when we start activation energy, right? When we start, it's like when the space shuttle, you know, goes off the ground, it uses, I think like 80% of its fuel in the first five minutes getting off the ground, right? Wow. And yeah. it's, that's what happens when we start something. So continuing that moving forward is, is so important. And do you need to rest? Yes but it needs to be intentional. Mm. Like I take a 20 to 25 minute power nap every day. I don't do it because I'm just tired. I do it so I can run hard in the afternoon and I can rejuvenate myself. So, you know, many times we are playing only at 10, 20, 40% of our potential. So I'd say nine times out of 10, you can push through. And you can continue to go. And that's why, especially from a coaching perspective, I love to have people define their identity. How do you want to show up, right? And I, I do it in three categories, energy, work, and love. Energy, right? How do you want to show up? I show up every day as a world-class athlete. Work, I show up as CEO of a $10 million company. Love, I'm dad and husband of the year. So by defining those identities, I'm going to embody those qualities and act that way. And that helps when you don't feel like it, right? When my son's 
shooting hoops and he asked me to rebound and we're sweating from a walk and it's hot out and I want to go inside. And I say, Hey, are you done? And he says, not yet, you know, but you can go inside. And I said, no, I got it, bud. I'm going to be here because I know those days are numbered. So we can push through so much more and we are so much stronger mentally and physically than we let ourselves believe. This is why you're a coach. I'm already ready to go for a run. I'm going to hang up here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've got buddies that talk to me like from high school. And and the crazy thing, Ryan, was senior year on the male side, I was voted biggest complainer, if you would believe that, right? Like, so it's not where you start. It's where you end and, and how you grow. And I have high school buddies and they're like, hey, Jeff, do you ever get like, after you talk to somebody that they're like, I want to run through a brick wall. And I'm like, yeah, because I bring energy right to, to the equation. And that's such, such a superpower when we can bring that positive energy to everything we do. Yeah. You can tell it's positive just by the way you talk, you can tell, which is like attractive, right? You want to be around those type of people. You just said something that, I, that really caught my attention. I want to dive into is you said you were the biggest complainer. I think a lot of people know negative people in life. And a lot of times I think the saying is life is like, people don't change. How did you change that? How do people go about changing their negative mindset and complaining a lot to being as positive? I mean, not quite as positive, but just even like a step in the right direction. How do we do that? Yeah. And and even in college, I had a old fraternity brother who was in one of my programs and we were kind of sharing about each of us. And he said, yeah, Jeff was, you know, kind of a Debbie Downer in college. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, high school into college. I'd say my trigger was when my mom got sick with breast cancer. Uh, I needed to be positive for her. Unfortunately, I wear the pink wristband because she passed away eight and a half years ago. And then that was the the kerosene, the jet fuel on my fire to say, okay, what do I truly want to do in life? And I should be happy every day that I wake up because my late mother would do anything to spend some time with her three kids and her seven grandkids. So why am I feeling that way? And when you you know, do the bookends that I coach people to do, right? PM and AM bookend, you stack wins, you get this positivity. It's tough to have mm -hmm. low energy when you're intentionally getting wins and feeling good about yourself. So, you know, you definitely can can be in that growth mindset and you can change. And listen, I'm a great example of Bigger's Complainer, Debbie Downer, and, and now a, a positive force. If someone is having a really tough time and they really, they know they're a Debbie Downer, um, mm -hmm. what, what would be step one? What would you recommend to them? Shutting off the negative inputs. So that's news, mm -hmm. getting away from social media right in the morning. Don't check your phone. Don't check email. Doing some things to take care of yourself first before you do anything else. And I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a sin that so many people start their day looking at their phone and they end their day looking at their phone. Everyone does. That's, that's a recipe. And that's one of the hardest things I get people and dads specifically to break that habit of. And it's a game changer because they get better sleep. They're more well-rested. They're stacking wins. They're feeling this momentum. They're intentional with their wife and kids. And it's just amazing. So that would be, you know, I, I say take away the bad things we're doing versus build new things you're going to get quicker wins from eliminating the things that are are bringing you down and and listening to the news, watching the news, social media, email, text, getting away from the phone, especially to end and start your day is is incredibly powerful. Okay, let's talk about that real quick. I know a lot of us have been told put your phones down, don't be on late because the screen, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff right for your eyes and stuff. Why morning? Why is that a rule to not pick up your phone in the morning? So, all right, let's go through that example. So we have something called the negativity principle in our minds, right? We're wired for negativity, caveman brain. Basically, we still think anything negative is a saber-toothed tiger ready to kill us. So it amplifies anything negative. Our minds do eight to nine to maybe 10 times more than a positive emotion. So imagine checking your phone. And I, I was talking to a client once and, and checking your phone and he did it on a Sunday. And he had gotten a bad text from his boss that immediately gets you in that fight or flight system, uh, state. Hmm. And that immediately sends you down, down that dark path where could he have stacked seven, eight wins real quick in like 15 minutes, feel good about himself. Check it. 
and be much more equipped to take on that negativity? Yes. So that negativity principle, and I'm, you know, the listeners, I'm sure they've had it happen, right? Where somebody says something negative about you or you hear it and it just sticks with you. That's because the mind amplifies it, right? It's wired to keep us safe, but there's no saber tooth tiger ready to kill us. It's just the negativity that's around. That makes a lot of sense. Do you have tips for people, perhaps like leaving their phone in a different room overnight or anything? Because I know it's like a drug, right? People are just like, just so used to doing that. Yeah. I mean, it's every time you get pinged, it's like a dopamine hit, right? Mm -hmm. And and, it, and then it wires it in the brain. Right? And I've had my phone on do not disturb for the last five years. So unless, <laughs> are you serious? Yes. Unless you <laughs> are on my favorite list, which is my close friends and family or my clients, you can't get a hold of me unless I pick <laughs> up my phone. Awesome. And it has given me such peace. I'm, I'll be around my dad sometimes. He's 76 years young. I still train him a little, a couple times a week in my garage gym and his phone pings. I'm like, would you turn that thing off? It's driving me nuts. Like, and that, but that's how many people, that's how most people react, right? They have it on constant notifications, whether it's social texts, no, do not disturb. And my family and friends and my my clients know, hey, if they need a hold to get a hold of me, you got to call me because I'm not responding to somebody else's wishes. What if it's an emergency? Because I have a feeling people are thinking, like, what, what if the hospital needed to get a hold of you or something like that? What what's your what do you say about that? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, hopefully, my wife or sons, if it, they were in the <laughs> hospital, they would say, you got to call for my phone because he's got it on do not disturb. That's incredible. I love it. I absolutely love that. Um, I know we're talking about some morning stuff and, and, you know, you really dive into a morning routine. We'd love to hit on that just a little bit of perhaps some tips and tricks uh, of a morning routine and why a morning routine, which you kind of just hit on is so important. Yeah. It's, it's being intentional with our time and it's stacking wins right immediately when we wake up. And that's so important to get that progress, feel that momentum. And I'll, I'll give your audience three, and these are three that I do regardless of if I'm traveling for work, on vacation with the family, camp, whatever it is. First thing, drink a full glass of water when you wake up in the morning. Longest stretch of the day you go without water is at night. You're dehydrated. Your vital organs are 60, 70, 80% of water. You want a natural wake-up process? Drink a full glass of water, right? You feel so much better when you do that. Mm -hmm. Number two, move the body. We are physical beings meant to move. You can do burpees. You can go for a walk outside for, you know, even just a minute, get out some fresh air, move the body. It's going to, again, wake you up. And then third, meditation, spending some time and thought. I still use guided meditation app. I think today was 2040 straight days. So I've meditated <laughs> over amazing. five plus five plus years, 10 minutes, at least straight, but being able to sit and breathe and focus on your breath, get some, get some peace and some calm from the chaos that is life. And we, we just go, go, go busy, 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 always plugged in, always wired in those times. Those moments are just so precious to recharge. You do that. You stack three wins. You're feeling pretty good about yourself, right? Before anything happened, you took care of yourself and, and consistent, we, right? And you keep showing up that consistency. I've told my wife, yeah. like, even if I'm in the hospital, you better put those earbuds on and, and help me meditate, right? For a quick <laughs> 10 minutes, because I want to see how long I can take that streak, right? But it's that consistency over and over again of doing it. It's hardwired as a habit. So I don't even really need to think about it now, but it just gives such a foundation versus like we're talking about checking your phone, letting somebody else's desires, wants, and needs override yours mm. so they actually say that about making the bed too right I, which i and yeah, I, I don't do i i do do that <laughs> right that that i always make the bed right when and, and i've coached my sons on that they're like my sons do these things as well because they're not taught in schools mm -hmm. my wife's a school teacher my late mother was a school teacher my sister-in-law is a school teacher but they're, they're not taught in schools yeah stacking wins taking care of yourself pouring into yourself it's the greatest gift you can give. And we so many times think it's selfish. It's so unselfish because when mm. you pour into yourself, 
you show up as a better version for all those around you. You can show up with energy, with love and gratitude and happiness and positivity. So yeah, stacking those wins. I mean, it. I have a rule. You're not checking your phone in the morning and you're stacking wins right when you wake up. And I've had people completely get off anxiety medication. Wow. When they do that. Why? Because the worst time they get anxious is when they wake up in the morning because their mind starts going. All right, well, you're stacking wins right when you wake up instead. And all of a sudden, they feel better. All of a sudden, they're, they've got seven, eight wins. Wow, I've accomplished a lot already. And it's only 20 minutes since I work, woke up. That's awesome. When do you meditate? Do you do that uh, kind of almost last after you've stacked wins? Uh, I do it kind of in the middle. So okay. uh, water, you know, obviously making my bed and, and you know doing the bio things real quick. Water moving the body. And then I meditate right, th right then. And then I jump into, you know, some, some gratitude journaling notes, to the kids and, and reading something as well as some affirmations in the, in the middle of it. Um, and it's, you know, 15, 20 minutes and I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. And I feel fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. So what about people who say, I can't do that. I got these babies and kids. I got these dogs to take care of. I'm sure you've heard that before. What do you tell them? You need to commit and you want, you, you've got to have the desire to change. Like if, if you're going to make excuse, everybody can make excuses. I mean, I just literally had a guy in the warrior dad experience in class two, he enrolled, he's got two kids, one's four and one's two. And his wife was pregnant and due during the 10 week program. And he still enrolled. He had his third child and he's still staying consistent with the habits and, and rituals that we instill and being accountable. So, you know, your excuses, everybody can make excuses, right? But I would I would challenge you of if you want it bad enough, because if you do, you can figure it out. Everything's figure outable. Figure out a way. If it's kids, you can incorporate them in the process, right? I've had some mm -hmm. dads that next thing you know, I get a text picture, you know, and it's the dad and the three kids drinking water in the morning. Like that gives me goosebumps because we're sharing then and leading the next generation and we're setting them up for success. Absolutely love it. The water I do, I go for a walk with my dogs every morning because I have to. Nice. Um, nice. But as far as meditation goes, that's one of my weaknesses. Um, I'm gonna ask you, like, what do you try to get out of meditation? What What is your purpose of meditation? Just some peace and quiet and some time just focusing on, on my breath. I mean, I'm five plus years. I still use guided meditation through, through an app, uh, you know, throughout the day I'll do easy breathing techniques. And I always tell people, especially when they're starting, make it simple, easy, almost laughable when you start, right? If you're going to start meditation, don't try and do a half an hour every day. You're setting yourself up for failure. First time you do it. Hey, just take a six count in through the nose, two second hold, seven seconds out. Do that four times. You've meditated for a minute. Mm. And it's amazing when we count, our mind can't focus on anything else because you're you're focused on counting the numbers. Minute meditation through the nose, breathing, stepping into the best version of yourself. That's a powerful exercise to practice throughout your days, not only in the morning, but really for me, just to controlling the breath, having some peace and quiet, and letting letting my mind focus and and hopefully get into the uh, into the present moment. It's not perfect. It never will be. Sometimes it wanders, and that's why I like the guided meditation because it'll you know kind of bring me back to the voice and what I'm focusing on. Oh, I need to do that so bad because a lot of times when my wanders just of like the checklist of things I have to do when I wake up and you know with work and what's going on with work when I turn my computer on, you start getting pings, and then like before you know it, the day's just you're caught up in what the day offers. So yeah, I think meditation is so powerful. It's something I just, I need to do it and I'm going to commit to doing it. I'm, I'm announcing it <laughs> right, right here. There you go. <laughs> what, what app do you use? If I don't mind people probably. Yeah, no, that. I mean, I use insight timer. So insight okay. timer is the app. I mean, there's calm headspace, a couple other right. ones. I right. mean, one of the beauties of insight timers and I'm sure the other ones do it as well, but once I'm done meditating, it shows how many consecutive days I've done. Oh, that's great. I would have never gotten to 2040 straight days if it didn't track it and show it to me, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's such a, another piece to habit creation. You've got to track it. When you track it, you start seeing the numbers. You start saying, okay, how, how long can I bring the, you know, take this streak? And then it allows you to focus. Love it. 
I want to talk real quick more about your journey. Um, mm-hmm. I know you said your mother passed away. My condolences with that. And I remember watching an interview of yours that uh, said what you were working corporate, right? And you said, mm-hmm. I had enough of this. I'm sure there's a lot of people thinking the same thing. So if you don't mind, like explain like what happened, how you made like the the leap of of faith probably, right? Leaving corporate. So I'd love to hear hear about that. Yeah. After my mom passed, it was a lot of deep soul searching of what do I truly want to do, right? We only get one trip around the sun and and uh, what impact do I want to have? And I, I, Ryan, I always had this itch on the back of my neck that I knew there was more inside, like n- there's more potential. I've had that. I get it. <laughs> like, and, and quite honestly, I was falling victim to what a lot of men, dads specifically do, like vices, alcohol, porn, gambling, mm-hmm. like all these things, right? That sedate us and chip away at who we are versus that potential that's inside. So thought about what I wanted to do. Came about eight months later, I was asked to relocate. I've got sons that were in sports. It wasn't going to happen. I said, all right, here's the here's the second sign after my mom passing. And I said, I was always into fitness. Let's, I'm going to open up a gym. So I ended up opening a kind of in between a CrossFit box. I was a former CrossFitter in like the local YMCA functional fitness boutique gym. And I did that for three and a half, four years. COVID hit, shut it down. But even before COVID, I was kind of transitioning into that mental toughness peak performance because so many people would put in an application to come see me. Fill out 10 questions, right? Take some time to do it. Maybe 20, 25, 30% max would actually respond to a call, text. And I was like, why is that? It's because mm-hmm. the battle they're facing in between their ears, they put it in, just like we said, why, why people won't stack wins in the morning because they're not committing. They had, don't have a belief in themselves. So they put in this application, then they wouldn't return any of my calls. So that's where I went down the deep dive. I wasn't doing the things I needed to do to level up as a man, husband, and father. I still remember it was an 8 a.m. Saturday class I was going to, and I was playing cards or poker with the guys in the neighborhood till two in the morning. And my wife, I, I went to give her a kiss and she gave me a great truth bomb. She's like, how are you going to teach a fitness class when you stink of alcohol? Mm-hmm. I said, oh, that's a pretty, pretty good one, right? I still still remember that conversation. So mm-hmm. just multiple iterations through leveling up myself and then getting into, you know, morning fire and coaching people on their routines. And then really this year, you know, I, I really thought about who I truly want to help. I'm not satisfied where society's headed. I don't like the polariz- polarization, the hate, the the negativity. How do we start? We start in the family. We start at the dad level. We, we, we empower dads to be the greatest version of themselves, to lead their families, almost like the captain of a sports team. And mm-hmm. when we do that, man, the, the whole family switches, changes. I've seen it. My two sons, my wife, and we're all on the attack. We're chasing. We're loving each other. We're supporting each other. And that's where we start to, to change the world. So that's a little bit, little bit about my journey. You work with women too, correct? Just want to make sure. I I do, um, but primarily primarily dads now at this point. Okay, awesome. And yep. this is another reason that you are great for my podcast at this moment because my wife and I, uh, about a year after getting married, we are talking about having kids. So mm-hmm. hopefully, at some point soon, I will be a dad for the first time. Um, what do you got? What do you got for me? What's what's some of your greatest tips or greatest advice for someone who is a brand new dad or is looking to become uh, a new dad? The moments go by in an instant. And before you know, like my guys are 14 and 13. Mm. I'm on the downside of having them in my house and mm. just taking in the moments, being present. And that's why a lot of the the dads come to me. They want to be present. They want to be intentional with their kids and they want to plant these seeds of growth and, and success in them that just aren't taught and they might not know. So being present, being intentional, so, so vitally important. I will give you this. And I made this promise to my sons. I said, if you make a bid for my attention, meaning, Hey, do you want to throw the football or can we, you know, do this basketball quiz on my phone? And if I'm not on a call, I will say yes. And that's probably one of the proudest things I've been able to do as a dad is they they still ask me at 14 and 13 to do things. Mm. Are you busy? It's an email. Email can wait. I'm going out and having a football catch with my son. 
because I know those days aren't aren't going to last forever. So um, those are those are a couple couple tips and kind of wisdom that I I live by as a dad. That's great. It sounds like you do a lot with like accountability too. Mm. Whereas you you announce it and you also tell other people this is my promise to you and they'll hold you accountable, right? It, it's huge. I mean, accountability is a staple of what I do with dads. Mm. We become adults and we have little to none accountability. And that's why so many people are stuck. Nobody holds you true to what you're going to do. You say something, maybe just to yourself, maybe you tell your wife and then you don't do it. Mm. And that, what that causes is a spiral down because what happens is when you say something and then you don't do it, your subconscious mind, your NASA supercomputer that runs so much of what we we do on a daily basis is listening and says, you know what? Ryan doesn't really want this. Mm. Next time you say something, your subconscious mind isn't going to help you get it because it's like, eh, last time Ryan said something, he wasn't going to do it. So it, it's a spiral down where we're, when you're accountable and you actually say what you're going to, you know, you, you do what you say, your mind's like, all right, he means business. Like let's spiral up. And it's amazing mm-hmm. how that, that can change. But accountability is, is a key value of mine. I, I always say I bring energy, consistency, and accountability to the table in any coaching arrangement. And that I feel are three secret ingredients to have people get just, just tremendous results. I, I relate to that. I love what you just said. It's one of those things where I've had this conversation with people. I don't put it out there. I don't say it unless I have the intention of doing it. Mm-hmm. I feel like too many people say stuff just because it sounds nice and they have no intention of following through. Drives me nuts. Absolutely nuts. I, if you tell me something, I believe it, right? And so many people just don't really follow through, which it also kind of really plays into the repeat part of your mantra as well as being accountable allows you to repeat. Um, I love this conversation, by the way. I can Thanks, see man. why I can see why you're such a uh, sought after coach. This is uh, this is incredible. I asked someone this question about a week ago. I'm curious to get this answer from you. Okay. Um, pick a the the most important piece of advice or wisdom that you did or want to pass down to your children. Like, what was important for you to tell them or let them know? Hmm. Wow, that's a that's a powerful question. Probably always be curious, right? And that's just like this love of learning. And I say it to them now because I'm passing down so many nuggets of wisdom that I I wish. I mean, I had great parents, but personal development wasn't well known back in the 70s and 80s, right? Mm-hmm. We didn't have the supercomputers. I am exposing them to so much from the greatest authors and coaches and peak performance coaches that work with Olympic athletes, NBA player, like I'm exposing. So just having this curiosity and this love of learning and this growth mindset, I think kind of all play together. And I say a lot of the times, the more I know, the less I know. Mm. How do you get them to be in a growth mindset? Like how, what if someone's listening to this and they're like, well, my kid has just no interest in anything that I do. Would you have any tips for a dad that's like, Hey, you know, I really want my kids to be in more of a growth mindset. Yeah. So you got, one of the things I've done is, is try and relate it to something they're interested in or use different language. So Ryan, I've meditated with my, my two sons before school for the last three years. Awesome. Your kids sound and, great too, by the way. They're willing to do things to make themselves they, better, which I appreciate. They they are, but I, I didn't say, hey, let's meditate. I said, you want to breathe together? Well, I mean, think about that. Ask first, do you want to meditate? Meditate, mm-hmm. it's like, well, I don't know what that is. Maybe I'd be fearful. You want to breathe before school? Mm-hmm. Well, I breathe all the time. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> Right. And, and I did that because my, my youngest son Carter has Crohn's disease. So we were working on some anger issues, but, Mm. you know, having them be open to it and then relating it to something that they're chasing. So they're in the football and basketball. My oldest son was seventh going into eighth grade, you know, girls came into the picture, Snapchat, you know, texting late at night, all these things. And I related it to him. I said, listen, you want to grow big and strong. You want to be a tremendous athlete. You got to get the proper night's sleep. 
And it kind of came 180 when I tied it into the things that he's interested in, yeah. where there's now nights, even during the summer, he'll beat me up in bed by nine o'clock because he wants to get a good night's sleep, right? So tying it into what they're interested in, meeting them at their level, and definitely changing the position or the language of it. And then incenting them. Like I, I incent my boys. Yes. Do they have chores? But it's not a chore list. It's a mission list because missions are musts, right? That's the mindset. They breathe, they drink water, they make their bed, they gratitude journal, all these things. Because I want them to know when you invest in yourself, you get rewarded for it. So those are just a couple, couple pieces from, from the dad book. <laughs> I, I got to get this book. I definitely got to start reading it. How have you been able to maintain such a great relationship with your kids, especially into their teen years? Because I do know being a teenager myself, and I do know friends and family that have teenagers when their kids get to be teenagers, they kind of like rather go hang out with their friends than mom and dad. So how, what is your advice? What have you been able to do so, so well? Yeah, I, I'd say back to the answering all the bids when they want your attention, right? And not putting something in front of them, pouring into them every single day as much as you can and, and having those conversations. I've, I mean, I have had conversations with my boys. I will do whatever it takes to get you to where you want to go or to chase your dreams. And if that means like this past Saturday and Sunday, I'm at the local Y at 7 a.m. rebounding for both of them as they're shooting in an empty gym, that's what I'm willing to do. So I think that them knowing that has helped. I'd also say in being vulnerable at times, sharing, right? I gave up alcohol about 18 months ago, January 1st, 2022. Nice. I've shared with both my sons. Listen, the reason why I'm giving up alcohol is one, to show you what's possible. Two, I wish I never touched the stuff because mm -hmm. it, it I, I made a lot of bad decisions, wasted a lot of money, a lot of time in my life due to that. And I would say I'm I'm not scared to have a difficult discussion when it comes to that stuff. And I think that allows me to be vulnerable in them to say, okay, yeah, he he's 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 meeting me at my level as well as pushing the limit, right? I, I know we're gonna talk about the goggins and my challenge, <laughs> but they see me attacking life. They see me on my toes, they see me doing ice baths and crazy things. And they're like, well, this guy's got some energy. I, you know, I, I kind of want to follow his lead. Right. So those are, those are a couple of ways. Yeah. You lead by example. That's yeah. something I really want to do. I, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say my wife will say, you know, I inspire her to do things because I'm constantly going, I'm chasing, chasing my passions. I don't make excuses. I say what I mean. I mean what I say. Um, I feel like you're a different level, so I'm still not quite there yet, but I really, really respect that a lot. Um, I think one thing I've definitely noticed since the first minute we started talking is I can tell work-life balance is really important for you. Um, perhaps it's slightly easier now that you kind of do your own business and make your own hours. We could talk about that. But when you are working corporate, and a lot of people who work corporate and they're having trouble with work-life balance and then putting a lot of time towards their family. Mm -hmm. What do we do in that situation? Yeah, I mean, if you're stuck, I would say you got to search out an employer that has that as a priority and wants to give you the freedom to be able to, to do that. I was, when I was in corporate, when my sons were born, I was virtual. So I was at home. So my wife's a teacher. So I took all my, I took my boys to, preschool. I took them to the doctor's appointments. I, I was there for all the events. So it, at least in my job at that time allowed me the flexibility. And my boss was awesome. She's like, listen, if you've got an hour to go to first grade and read a book and be a surprise reader, you got to take that advantage. So yeah. um, definitely align yourself and make sure you know, you're, you're working for an organization that values family and values that that time because you'll never get those moments back. Yeah. I think a lot of people are in a situation where they just, the employer doesn't really respect that. I know I was, I'm not anymore. And I'm in such a great place now. I'm so happy about that. That's awesome. Um, I had to find a few jobs to get there. Uh, mm -hmm. So I can empathize with the people that kind of do feel stuck that they have to bring the money in. They have a good job, but they're, they're losing time with their family and loved ones and, 
things that they want to do, their passions and hobbies. It's a tough one, right? Do you, do you get that question a lot? Like, Hey, how do I get work-life balance? I do. And uh, you know, in the example, if they did not have an employer or boss who is sympathetic, empathetic to, to spending time with the family, then what I do is coach them to have that clean break of when work's done, work's done. You're mm-hmm. switching from the work role to the love role dad and husband of the year. You're going to be intentional. You're going to be present. You're not going to be checking email from work. And I think employers that, you know, even if it's in a global organization that expect people to be on calls at 8 PM or it's, it's total BS. Like you you are trying to wring every ounce of productivity out of somebody and they're going to burn out and they're Mm -hmm. going to end up leaving. So, you know, making that clean break, if you don't have it during the day and stepping into that house as, Hey, I'm, I'm the dad and present right now. That's a, that's a powerful practice to get into if you don't have it on, on the work side. Yep. I was that person. I got burned out. I had to have a long conversation with my boss, which ultimately ended up to me leaving a few months later. Gotcha. But uh, for a wonderful situation, so uh, it worked out well. But yeah, for the people listening to this that are struggling, just got to hang in there. And as you say, find someone that aligns with your values because um, you don't get those moments back. Um, before we get to the Goggins thing, which I really do want to get to, um, I'm throwing this out there. I know I didn't give you any time to prepare for this, but um, what's perhaps one or two things that you do throughout the day that perhaps people think is just minuscule, but it's like underrated, if that makes sense. Minuscule, but underrated things that I do. I I love going for a walk, Yeah, right? Getting out in nature, going for a walk. I mean, we actually just went with my wife and my youngest son went for a walk last night at dinner, after dinner, during dinner, my oldest said, Hey, do you guys want to go for a walk? Right. That's like, great. Co- I it, love it that. is. It is. And and you know what, Ryan? That was a blessing from COVID. COVID mm. happened. Everybody was home. We ended up going for walks so much as a family. And, you know, it, it gets me choked up that my 14 year old last night is still asking. That's awesome. Hey, guys, you want to go for a walk? I mean, this this whole narrative that our kids don't want to spend time with us it's probably a reflection on you not being there and answering the bids because I can tell you when you answer the bids, my kids still want to be around me. They still, you know, they call me goofy and quirky and all those, you know, things, but they still want to be there. So, um, you know, going for a walk definitely, uh, is, is a great piece to the equation and taking breaks. We can't just hammer meeting after meeting after meeting. We're we're not designed that way. So, Mm stepping away, even it's just five minutes to get out and to some sunlight, sit on the back deck for a few minutes, collect my thoughts, breathe a little bit. You know, those things, they empty out that glass of water that you filled up for the past 45, 90 minutes of of meetings and allows you to go back and play hard. So, you know, that, that would be number two. Number three is a good one. I I do push-ups and like, I'm, I work out before I jump on calls. Yeah. Awesome. Like you want to bring energy? Drop and do 20 push-ups before you jump on a call. It will make a profound difference in your energy level, your tonality, how you speak, and how how you and people are like, all right, this <laughs> I, I want whatever he's selling, right? right? And and it's it's crazy how those just moving the body can change your state and it can have such an impact on on your performance. Yeah, I can see a little goggins in you now for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, you know, I don't have kids, like I said, but I'm envious of the relationship that you have with your kids. And I'm hoping in 13, 14, 15 years or whatever, I'm looking at a similar situation. So I appreciate you being and having a relationship with your kids that we all can aspire to, uh, completely understand how you founded warrior dad, <laughs> um, makes complete sense. Uh, I want to, I want to just hit on that real quick about warrior okay. dad, just talk mm-hmm. about that and how people can find you because I usually kind of wait to the end for people to, Hey, pub yourself, blah, blah, blah. I feel like yep. what, you, what you just said was like so profound. I want to talk about that real quick. Yeah. And, and, and Ryan, one of the reasons why I leaned into this, cause I thought back in my history and I've, I've coached youth sports for 20 plus years. So mm-hmm. even before my boys were born and my oldest had a formal uh, this past spring with a couple of his buddies, they asked me to drive. Hmm. 
because I coached a lot of those kids in sports and they're like, can your dad drive? And some of the moms were like, I guess you're the cool dad. Well, I poured into these kids, right? So it was so congruent for me to go and start leading dads and, and bracing that warrior mentality and having them be intentional. And, and the things I hear most from the dads that jump into the warrior dad experience is I want to be more consistent. I want to have accountability and I want to be mm. intentional with my, my wife and kids. And when they do it, when they get the system, it, it happens like the first week they're in the program, they're like, I can't believe the difference it's making. And when we do small, simple things, when we get around a group that is in that mindset of growth, family focused, want the best for themselves and their kids and their family and their wives, it raises your game. So it's it's just an amazing journey to watch. And I'm so blessed and grateful just to be their guide mm. based upon the fires and the trials and tribulations I went through as a, as a man, as a dad and a husband. And it's just great to bring that back and share it with others. So the warrior dad experience, it's an amazing, amazing gift. It's a 10 week program. Anybody interested, they can go and check out testimonial videos, kind of the benefits of the program that's out at www.thewarriordad.com. Woo. It's fantastic. And I'm also going to link all of the notes in the show notes. So people scroll down, you'll be able to find his website, video book, podcast, everything, you name it. Um, yeah, this is just really, really good information. And the thing I love about it is this is like life-changing information. This is going to make everybody's life so much better, which is obviously why you're the coach that you are. But just take a minute to think about it. all these small changes just make your life better and everyone around you better. That's all you really want, right? I mean, it's just... <laughs> and, and, and I'd say it only takes one dad yeah. to change the family tree forever, mm. Mm. forever. Think about that. And my mission is to help guide, lead 1 million dads, elevate 2 million children by January 1st, 2053. Imagine a couple more generations down the line, the impact that we'll be able to have on families, on society. It, it just, man, it, it lights me up. That's great. And the impact you're having from one dad telling another dad who tells another dad who tells another dad, right? Like the whole yes. domino effect. That's, man, that's awesome. Absolutely love it. You're coming back on some sometime my podcast, by the way. I'd love it. I love it. I love talking about this stuff. This is great. Um, now I do have to mention, I, we talked about it briefly, the Goggins. You have the book in the background, which is one of the biggest inspirations of my life when I listened to an audio book four or five years ago now. Um, so the 4 by 48 challenge, can you explain what that is? And can you also explain what the hell made you do this, not once, but twice? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So- the four by four by 48 challenge, you run four miles. You start at 11 Eastern, 8 PM Pacific time on a Friday night. And then every four hours you run another four miles. So basically you're doing 12 lengths of four mile, 12 sessions of four miles over 48 hours. You finish Sunday. If you start 11 PM Eastern, I'm on, on the East coast, you finish 7 PM Eastern and uh, you're almost doing two marathons over a, uh, over a wow. week. Wow. I didn't add so, that up. Wow. Yeah. 48, 48, you're running 48 miles. So, um, first time scared the, I mean, I was really scared, but I planned it out. I got it done. I have a former Navy SEAL FBI Wim Hof certified buddy. And he said, listen, it's fine to do something once, but when you know the pain and the suffering that's involved, True grit is to do it a second time. I'm, I'm like, you son of a gun, oh, Earl. All man, right. That's a challenge. I'll, I'll do it again. And I did it again. And I, I crushed my time. So, you know, this year I was searching for a challenge. And I was like, okay. You know, I'm not a huge runner. I love the mental challenge of running at 3 a.m. in the morning and just getting up and doing that things. And I said, all right, this year I'm going to create my own challenge. So I created the Wickersham challenge. And here's what it was. It was 26 rounds of running a mile, 50 pull up, 75 sit ups and 100 push ups. So over the time you would do a full equivalent of a full marathon, 1300 pull ups, oh 1950 God. sit ups and 2600 push ups. So I trained for about 4 months and I did it July 1st and it was everything and more 
I mean, the, the amount of pain and suffering I went through, it took me 16 and a half hours to do it. And Holy it was, shit. uh, it, it was, it was crazy. I mean, I have an ultra trail runner who's doing a hundred miler in a couple of weeks. I'm going to crew him a little bit in his race. He said, is that even possible? <laughs> and when he said that to me, I was like, that's it. I'm hooked. Like, let's do this. So, um, it was, it was it was epic. It was savage. And it was, it was the hardest thing I've ever done physically or mentally. Where did that come from? I just, I, I want to run a full marathon, but not run a full marathon. <laughs> so I was okay. like, all right, 26 rounds. I did like 1.01 miles every, so I did the 26.2. I ran a marathon in a day. And then I love just body weight movements. I think they're so undervalued. So the combination of doing 1300 pull-ups, 1950 sit-ups and 2,600 push-ups is like, the amount of weight you're moving when you extrapolate it out is, is just ridiculous. So, um, yeah, it was, it was quite a test. That's incredible. What does your wife say when you're like, Hey, I'm going to wake up at 3am and go run <laughs> four miles or whatever. Is she supportive of this or is she like, you crazy? Oh, they know what they know. I'm crazy. Right? <laughs> but but I, I tell them, I, I think it was Joe Rogan that said one time, like crazy and greatness yeah. are their next door neighbors and they borrow each other sugar. Mm. And I'm like, y y listen, if you want to be extraordinary, you got to put yourself out there. You got to push the limits. And like, I didn't have anybody holding me to this Wickersham challenge. I just said to myself, one, I want to show my sons what's possible when you dedicate yourself and, and you fully commit. And up to that challenge, people were asking, how are you going to do this? Right. In training, mm. I had only done nine rounds. It took me like four hours and I knew how difficult it was going to be. But I always said to him, listen, I've committed to pay the price no matter what it is. Hmm. And when you commit to pay the price, no matter what it is, your potential comes out. And it's funny, the week later, my, my wife and I were at the, at the beach talking about it. And she said, I got to be honest with you. I was a wreck when you were doing that. And I said, why? She said, I knew you wouldn't quit. And I was scared you were going to die. Mm. but I didn't, I got through it, finished it about 1130 at night, 1230. I'm eating a little, you know, some mashed potatoes, trying to recover a little bit. My oldest son came down the steps. He said, dad, I'm so proud of you. That's I said, awesome. what? Maybe one in a million, one in 10 million dads might've been able to do what you just did. So just pushing the limits physically and mentally, it, it untaps our potential when you do that. I got to ask you, what inspires you? You inspire everybody else, but what inspires the master? <laughs> yeah. I think it was, you know, I've, I've heard it from different people. We're always chasing the best version of ourselves. And I think that is, you know, I don't want my, here, I'll, I'll, I'll last deep conversation with my, my late mother. I took her down to a treatment at, at a hospital and she was so scared she would be forgotten. And that probably drives a lot of it. Like, I don't want to get to my deathbed and mm -hmm. say I left anything in the tank. Yeah. Now the reality is I'm sure I'll probably leave something in the tank. Cause we're not, we're, we're imperfect human beings. Right. But the more days that I can play like that, the more days I can play on fire with energy and impact other people and inspire and be a little crazy, the more I'm going to make a dent on the universe. And, and that's, I can give, if I can have one conversation, like I said, one dad to change the family tree forever, imagine how special and how just extraordinary that is that I, I, I'm grateful that I can, I can do that. So, you know, I just, I, I channel my inner Goggin sometimes and I take <laughs> stuff from those, those type of individuals. I, I, I'm so appreciative of the armed services. I mean, I, I, I considered when nine 11 happened, becoming a Navy seal, right? Mm -hmm. I, I had that twitch. I had that twinge and, you know, there is just, we are playing so small. The majority of people are playing so small and they're going to get to their deathbed and they're going to look back and have, just so many regrets. And I don't, mm. I don't want to have to have that conversation like I had with my late mother and hear her say, like, I just don't want to be forgotten. Yeah. The fear of regret is one thing that drives me every day. Powerful. <laughs> it, 
it it truly is and and we're not perfect right we have days where we don't do everything we can but man when you can push the the limits of what you think is possible when you can look back on your day and say hey did i empty out that bucket and you say yes man that's a that's a heck of a way to set yourself up for a great night's sleep right awesome man I can tell why you're such a great coach. This this is just been, well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. I gotta ask you, what's what's next? What's on tap for you? Continuing to double down on the warrior dad and just go all in because that that's that's the North Star I've set, and that will guide everything I do moving forward. So it's having more conversations with dads. It's you know, men especially, they're 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 lone wolves, right? They like to sit in the cave. I always say I gotta take the smoke bomb and throw it in the cave and get them out and have them stop saying, Yeah, I'm good, man. Because are you really? Hmm. And many aren't, but they hide it. Ego gets in the way. And especially if you're a dad with kids, like I say, ego is stopping your children's dreams because your lack of growth mindset, your lack of feeding them these things that are gonna just set them up to be gritty to be resilient to be focused it's gonna you know stop their stop their growth if you say no i'm good i'm okay Mm. so just just driving into the warrior dad and continuing that uh, that journey and building out that brotherhood love it where can people follow you and find you yeah so i'm on all major channels post a lot on uh, linkedin and instagram you can just look up jeff wickersham uh if you're a dad and you've got that itch through this conversation you're like man i want to be a part of brotherhood i want to i want to untap i want to give my kids the things i didn't have go out to thewarriordad.com grab a time just love talking right seeing if you're a fit i don't know if you will be or not right i i i want to be sure you're going to put in the work because I have a hundred percent success rate of the guys that have gone through, right? If you put in the work, you get results. So the warrior dad.com is where they can, uh, where they can check that out. Hell yeah. All right, Jeff, uh, before we wrap this up, is there any final words of advice or anything you want to say? I love this line. Today is a gift. You will never get again. So use it wisely. Ooh. Love it. That's something I'm going to be telling myself all the time now. I love it when like a quote sticks with you and you just use it to drive yourself every day. That's really yeah. awesome. Yeah. Jeff, you're the man. I really, really appreciate your time. Like I said, you're coming back on, especially if I find out I'm becoming a dad. <laughs> there you go. Love on. it, Ryan. Thanks, man. Awesome. Jeff, thanks for being an inspiration. All right. We'll talk soon. All right. Thanks, my man. Thank you.